Welcome to the OLVD, the Reflection for Friday, September 16th. The first reading for today's Daily Mass comes to us from the 15th chapter of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. It reads, Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then empty too is our preaching, empty too your faith. Then we are also false witnesses to God, because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if, in fact, the dead are not raised. And if the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiful people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. St. Paul in today's reading is addressing the community in Corinth around the article of faith that we believe in the resurrection of the dead. And for many people, this article of faith is hard to understand because it's not based in our human experiences. The resurrection from the dead hasn't happened yet, and its consequences, its results are eternal. So it's very hard for us to use our current experiences in the world to enlighten and to deepen our understanding of the resurrection from the dead. So this article of faith truly requires us to have faith in the revealed word of God and the truths that the church has given to us for our reflection. So for today's reflection, I want to provide a few paragraphs from the Catechism of the Catholic Church in order to help us deepen our faith in the resurrection from the dead and also to help us better understand the implications of the resurrection from the dead. So these paragraphs are 1015 through 1019 from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. They read, The flesh is the hinge of salvation. So we believe in God who is creator of the flesh. We believe in the word made flesh in order to redeem the flesh. We believe in the resurrection of the flesh, the fulfillment of both creation and the redemption of the flesh. By death, the soul is separated from the, from the body, but in resurrection, God will give incorruptible life to our body, transformed by reunion with our soul. Just as Christ is risen in our lives forever, so all of us will rise at the last day. We believe in the true resurrection of this flesh that we now possess. We sow a corruptible body in the tomb, but he raises up an incorruptible body, a spiritual body. As a consequence of original sin, man must suffer bodily death from which man would have been immune if he had not sinned. Jesus, the Son of God, freely suffered death for us in complete and free submission to the will of God, his Father. By his death, he has conquered death and so, op so open the possibility of salvation to all men. So as those brief paragraphs make clear what St. Paul explained to the community in Corinth, if we don't believe in the resurrection from the dead, if we struggle in our faith around this essential belief, we truly are struggling with our belief in Christ and what he accomplished for us by his death and resurrection. So again, if we're struggling, this is where our prayer needs to go, to allow these truths of our faith to enter more deeply into our hearts and minds so they can transform us and help us to better understand how each of us is called to ensure that the resurrection from the dead helps us to truly have hope. That this world, these experiences, especially as we look at our struggling bodies, our weak bodies, our painful bodies, that this isn't the end. But Christ, because of his death and resurrection, has opened up something more glorious and amazing than we can ever understand. We, 
just need to renew our faith and have hope that all will be reconciled, all will be made whole, and we will experience one of the greatest gifts that any of us could ever imagine, the resurrection from the dead and eternal life with Christ. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us.